Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Ball and I wanted to do this video to explain some answers to some commonly asked questions about eutrogestan. So eutrogestan looks like this. And in order to answer questions about eutrogestan, we first need to talk about what progesterone actually is. So progesterone is one of the three uh, important reproductive hormones in our body and it's a hormone that's actually made by a little temporary gland called the corpus luteum which is formed after we release an egg each month at ovulation and that little gland is actually pumping out lots of progesterone which would support a pregnancy if it were to happen but if a pregnancy doesn't happen that month then the levels of progesterone fall away and that then induces our next period. So natural progesterone usually is quite good at um, helping us to sleep better. It also helps us to feel calmer and it's helping to regulate the lining of our womb every month. Um, but some of us are a bit oversensitive to our own natural progesterone and that can cause symptoms to do with premenstrual syndrome. So things like uh, fatigue, cravings for carbohydrates, breast tenderness, um, mood issues. So what is eutrogestan? So basically for many years, it was actually very difficult to get our own natural type of progesterone into a medication. It's actually quite complex to do that. But over the last few decades, that has been achieved by scientists. So we call eutrogestan micronized progesterone and the micronized bit just means that in simple terms, the natural progesterone, which is taken from the yam plant, is ground up essentially like with a pestle of mortar and then it's added with an oil like substance which then makes it capable to make it into a capsule which can be used uh, by us orally. And so that means that eutrogestan because it is using natural progesterone is what we call body identical HRT which I'm sure as you know is the natural plant based derived regulated hormones that we would usually favour as the best type to use for women. And that really differentiates them from what we call synthetic um, hormones. And so going on to who needs progesterone. So basically, if you are thinking of taking HRT and you still have your womb, then you would aim to have progesterone as part of it. And on a case by case basis, there are some women who have had a hysterectomy, for example, for um, endometriosis, which hasn't all been taken away, or who've had what we call a subtotal hysterectomy, who may still need progesterone, but that should be discussed on a case-by-case -case basis with your healthcare professional. And so why would we consider a HRT that involves eutrogestan to be considered the ideal? And it is essentially um, to do with the fact that it's body identical means that it is usually better tolerated than the synthetic type of progestogens. Um, and it has advantages in terms of how well it works and how safe it is. So using HRT, for example, the oestrogen part of the HRT can be very helpful for our metabolism and the um, health of our blood vessels, for example. And using synthetic, the older type of synthetic progestogens can partially undo that benefit. But if you use the natural progesterone like eutrogestan, that actually enhances the benefit. And probably the most important safety um, thing to consider is the fact that it is considered breast safe. So we're still not entirely clear whether any type of HRT carries an increased risk of breast cancer. The older types of HRT, there may be a small link there. But with the newer types, or in other words, HRT that involves eutrogestan, the data that we have would suggest there is no increased risk of breast cancer with it. So essentially, the role of progesterone when we use it in HRT is to help protect the lining of our womb, to help our sleep and also to reduce anxiety. And so coming back to the eutrogestan, if you take it out of the packet, you will find in each packet there are um, 30 capsules um, like, like this and each capsule is 100 milligrams and so the dose and the regime depends on where you're at in your menopause journey. So there's two main regimes, there's one called cyclical 
and there's one called continuous. So the cyclical regime is the regime that would be used for women in the perimenopause. So in other words, women that are still having periods or whose periods haven't yet stopped for a whole year. So with those women, we are actually aiming to mimic what the ovaries should be doing on a monthly cycle. So we actually try to give a bleed with this regime for a short period of time. So the correct way of doing this, and there's a couple of different ways, which can be a bit confusing when you first start using it. But the licensed way of using this is to take two capsules at night time. So in other words, 200 milligrams from days 15 to 26 of your cycle. So day 15 is 15 days after the first day of your period. And so you would take the capsules each night for 12 consecutive days. And then you would have the, probably your period would then come a few days later, and then you would start again on day 15 of your next cycle. So that would be the easiest and correct way of doing it if you're still having regular periods some people are having quite irregular periods at the time that they go on to HRT. And so to make things simpler for those, you could take two of the capsules each night for two weeks and then have two weeks off. So two weeks on, two weeks off. That's easier to remember in general and should gradually over the course of the first three to six months of use, create you a sort of a monthly cycle so that you should end up having a monthly period. The periods may not come exactly monthly and certainly when you start using it the periods may come a bit sooner than you're expecting or a bit later or may take a little while to form a pattern but they usually will form a pattern. Then we move to what we call the continuous combined regime which is for people that have been on this cyclical regime usually for a minimum of a year, um, usually a year or two and then they move on to this regime or they may be starting HRT for the first time and they've already gone at least a year without a period. So they will take the capsules in a continuous way. So they just take one capsule at night time and they take that every night. So it's easy to remember, keep it by the side of your bed and you can take it every night. Although we don't encourage people to read the insert leaflets inside the boxes because many of them are very inaccurate, um, the, if you were to read it, you will see that the license dose is to use it for 25 days out of every 28. But for most women, that is not necessary for them to do that. So whenever you start any type of HRT, and whether that's the cyclical type or the continuous combined type, it's not unusual to experience bleeding that you weren't expecting or at a time that you weren't expecting. And that's OK over the first three months. And that's why follow ups for HRT are usually done after three months to check that everything has now settled down. The timing of taking Eutrogestan is important and it is important to take it at night. And we generally advise as you get into bed to take your Eutrogestan. That's because for most people it's quite sedative and helpful with sleep. And it's also important to try and have it on an empty stomach. So to try and make sure your evening meal was at least two hours prior to you taking the medication. And that's to try and reduce side effects. So coming on to side effects, like all medications, there are potential side effects. Um, I call these, so I can remember them, the four Bs, and that stands for bloating, uh, breast tenderness, uh, bleeding, and also what I would call the blues, so feeling a bit down. So all of those potential things are possible when you first start Eutrogestan, but like most side effects with things, they're usually temporary and will usually go away if you are patient. So the, the chief advice, if you think that you're not getting on with the Eutrogestan very well, is first of all, don't panic. There's usually um, another way of doing things. Um, but actually to be patient. So most people find that over the first couple of months of use that they gradually tolerate the Eutrogestan much better. And certainly if women are starting HRT for the first time, as their levels of oestrogen rise with the other part of their HRT, they generally find they tolerate the Eutrogestan better because of that. If you're doing the cyclical regime with Eutrogestan, it can be helpful to keep a bit of a diary of the side effects because you may start to find that they form a pattern which we can then use 
when we review you to work out how best to approach this. And certainly if the, uh, the side effects aren't settling down or are causing you um, a big problem, then obviously discuss with the person that prescribed it to you, but there is different ways of trying to approach this. One of the most common approaches to people having side effects with the Eutrogestam is to try an alternative route. So in the UK, the licensed route for Eutrogestam is to swallow it, to take it orally, but the capsule can be inserted in the vagina. So it is the same capsule that is used and it should be just inserted with the finger to a sort of finger length depth into the vagina. And that means that the progesterone is closer to where it needs to be to protect the lining of your womb. So you actually get sort of it works better when put in that way, but you will get less absorption into the bloodstream. So that's the reason we often use that to help reduce side effects. The slight downside of that is you will then tend to get less sedating and anxiety reducing effects. When we insert it into the vagina, it is possible to halve the dose from what it was orally. So in other words, if you're using it cyclically, rather than swallowing two tablets at night for part of the month, you could just insert one of the capsules each night for part of the month. And similarly, if you were taking it on a continuous basis and orally you were taking one capsule every night, then half the dose of that would be to insert one into the vagina every other night. We know there is evidence to suggest that that provides the womb with enough protection whilst trying to avoid any of the side effects that you may have been experiencing. Um, if none of that works, then there are um, potential alternatives for uh, progesterone, which can be discussed with your prescriber. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention that Eutrogestan does contain um, gelatin and also soya lecithin. So it is something that some vegetarians and vegans would rather um, avoid having. Um, so they may choose to use Eutrogestan vaginally rather than swallowing it orally, or they may rather avoid it altogether, in which case there are some other alternatives that are available, albeit they're not actually licensed for use as HRT, but they, it can be done. Um, so I hope that answers questions about this really common and very um, useful medication that we use a lot in HRT.